Hi everyone, my name is Michael Eilbrock with Diesel Laptops and today we're going to be talking about oscilloscope diagnostics. If you have any questions about the video today, please make sure you comment down below in the video. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. And also, if you want to see future videos with me in them showing you how to use the oscilloscope in your everyday diagnostics, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Today in this uh, tech tip video, I'm going to show everyone how to use an oscilloscope uh, to check uh, pressure of uh, your brake chambers and in correlation with that you can also do this to test your ABS modulator valves as well. Okay, so as you can see here I've got my jaw test software all ready to go. Uh, but before we get going showing you the test I want to show you my hookups. And if you look here in my first picture here to the left I basically just took my WPS 500, I took out this fitting on the front side of the brake chamber where your pancake's at, I put the fitting in here and put my transducer on here. I did the same thing to the other side as well. Okay, So this is beneficial to do a test like this because you can actually use this to help you figure out if you've got a air pressure imbalance in your brakes. So let's say for example you've got like a slight pull, you've checked all the mechanical, everything looks good and you can't find anything. Well more than likely it's an air pressure problem so you can hook this up and check that uh, to see if you're getting the same amount of air pressure going to each chamber because if you're not then you're going to have a brake imbalance and you're going to have a pull. Okay, so we can use the transducer for situations like that, and we can also use this uh, in conjunction with some current clamps uh, hooked up around uh, the wires to the modulator valves for the hold and release valves. Okay, so if you look here, I've got two amp clamps, and this is a four channel scope. So I want to be able to look at the current going through. Uh, the hold circuit and the release circuit as well okay and because the computer turns these signals on at different times then I'm going to be able to see the current go through each one of these wires okay as the computer turns it on that's why I've got my amp clamps hooked up like this okay because I've got one just hooked up right here for uh, the left front wheel and the other ones for the right front wheel for the mod the ABS modulator valves okay so now I'm going to use the software to help me do this test. So let's go back uh, to uh, the software. I'll show you what we're going to do. So we're going to select a modulator test here. And before you start the test, you want to have your scope set up, of course. But you also want to make sure that your uh, truck or your vehicle is at full system air pressure. And then you want to make sure that uh, you've got the, uh, the wheels chalked parking brake released and then what you're going to do is you're going to push your foot down on the pedal steady until it it's it stops okay and then you're going to turn on the test let it do the test and then when it's done then go back to your scope stop the scope and look at what you have okay but before we start the test I'm going to show you basically what I did on setup for the oscilloscope so right here I've got channel A is the left front brake chamber pressure. Channel B is the right front brake chamber pressure. Channel C is going to be the left front hold and release valve current. And channel D is going to be the right front hold and release valve current. Okay, so we'll do the automated test. The scope will gather the data and then we can look and see if we've got a, an imbalance, you know, with the air pressure. And not only that, we'll be able to look at the valves, make sure that the valves are opening and that we also see an even drop in the air pressure when these modulator valves are energized. Because if they're not, if they're not even when they're energized and the current looks good, then that's telling you right there that you've got a modulator valve that is sticking and you need to replace it. OK, so uh, using pressure transducers and current clamps are just amazing uh, for doing diagnostic situations like this. OK, so now let's go ahead and start the test. I'm going to go back to the software. OK, and of course, before I start this test, I'm going to put my foot down all the way on the brake. OK. 
And now I'm going to hit the check mark to start the test. Hit the check mark again. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to minimize this, go to my scope, and there we go. So now I'm just going to let off the air pressure on the brakes. And I'm going to stop the scope. And now let's take a look at this. Okay. So let's raise up the A channel. So that's the left front. And let's measure our pressure drops here. So initial pressure before we turned on that valve for the first time was 104 and when the uh, the valve was energized turned it on dropped it to 84.9 so that's a delta of 19.32 psi on that initial turn on okay now if we look at the red trace the right front axle go to my measurement cursors here 104 and we're 104 on the other axle too so we know we're getting the same amount of pressure going to each side so that's good and now I'll draw this down a little bit more and we got a little bit of a deviance right there so about 3 psi but usually that won't cause uh, a break imbalance from my experience anyway now if it started creeping over like uh, I would say like 8 to 10 PSI, then you could start possibly experiencing brake imbalance issues, okay, with ABS, you know. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. But now, uh, since we uh, measured the pressure drops, let's zoom in on this and let's take a look at our current. All right, so then I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Okay, and if we measure our current, looks like we got about 4 amps max. And that's on the release valves because it's dumping more air, and this current here is for the, the hold section, okay? So if I now, next thing I can do is I can actually zoom in on this even more and we can look at the current ramps and if you notice here this is showing an opening event okay of that valve okay and there's an opening event right here so let's say during your diagnostic you did this test and you didn't see this little dip in current and it was just going kind of straight up well that means that that valve is not opening, and if it's going straight up, it means it's the the coil is internally uh, shorted. Okay, so then you have to replace it. So you want to make sure you see a ramp and a little dip here. Okay, so the valves are opening. That's great. And here's the other thing you can do now too. You can actually time this and see how long it took to drop pressure. So if I take my time cursors here and I go to the exact point when the valve opens okay so about right here and then i go to the point where the pressure started to drop on the blue trace about right there we got about 11.4 milliseconds it takes for the pressure to drop out of that valve once the valve opens okay and then the other thing you can do too is if you want to compare these between sides all you need to do now is just go over here to your measurements and go to your time ruler boxes here and hit the padlock. It'll lock the rulers in place and then click on the rulers and just drag it over like this. And let's see if it matches close to it. And yeah, that looks pretty close. So right there we can see that the time that each one, each valve gets turned on and pressure dumps, it takes the same amount of time. So we know everything is even, not only when we just solely apply the brakes, 
but also when the modulator valves turn on and they dump the air pressure from the valves, okay? So we know the system's working properly, okay? So I like doing testing like this because if you just do the normal uh, modulator test, you put your foot on your brake and you, and you listen, well, sometimes, you know, you you might not hear a difference in it, and there could be a difference, okay? Uh, so that's that's happened uh, to me before in the field, okay? But uh, but anyways, I thought I just would show you this test. This is another type of application uh, that you can use the scope for. You know, sc scopes can be used for quite a few different things, not just for testing uh, engine, you know, but it can be used for quite quite a number of different things okay so but anyway i thought everyone would enjoy this and uh also if you look here it cycles it again to here as well but not as much okay so you can look at at this part of the waveform too to see if there's a variance but most of the time the the, or the main thing you want to look at is you want to look at that first initial drop in pressure because that's when the valve is on longer and it's stressing it longer okay that's really where you're going to see a problem where it's going to flush itself out okay um so anyway before i let everybody go i'll also uh, i showed my setups here and if you look on this screen here i'm on 10 seconds of division okay so that's like <laughs> over uh, a minute of time on the screen okay and my sample rate is still high enough I'm at 625,000 samples a second that's more than ample for doing a waveform like this okay uh, but no this is on a really long screen so you can do uh, these automated tests that the computer does so you can you can do an automated test with the software and then hook up your scope to the component to test and you'll be able to get the entire test that the computer's doing. And then you get to also start to recognize patterns on how the computer does the test. So, for example, you know, let's say the computer did the test and it only pulsed it like one time and then shut off. Well, if it did that, then that's telling me something's going on with the programming in the module. And you either have a bad program or you have a faulty module. Okay, so computers are are programmed to do things in a certain way. So that looking at this is just another great benefit of having an oscilloscope and understanding how to use one in these types of situations, okay? So if you have any comments uh, that you'd like to put in the video, please make sure you put the comments down below. And then if you like this video, please hit the like button as well. And also, if you'd like to see any future videos of me showing oscilloscope diagnostics, please make sure to hit that subscribe button.